Have you ever thought what it would be like to have this conversation with Darwin about your work and his work? <laughs> it, would be, it would be wonderful to do so, of course. Um, I, I once actually was um, invited by a Japanese television company to, uh, to meet an actor dressed up as Charles Darwin and um, I explain to him what had happened since his time. And it, it was quite fun. I mean, he was an English actor, not a Japanese actor. And he was quite a good actor. He, 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 he was dressed up, covered with grease paint, and he, he was looking, looking like Darwin. And the grease paint kept on dropping off, and the makeup girl had to come along and, and put it back on again. And, things. and um, uh, I had to explain to him about Mendelian genetics, because this was a puzzle that had faced Darwin in his own lifetime. Um, nobody knew anything about genetics at the time. It was just sort of vaguely known that like begets like, that there's a tendency for children to look like their parents. But it was sort of thought to be a kind of mixture. You were thought to be a sort of blend of your mother and your father. That's the way it appears. I mean, people do tend to have the cat attributes of both their mother and their father. Some has more of one, some has more of the other. Um, and, but it was thought to be blending a bit like mixing paint. You get red paint and blue paint and you mix them together and you get purple. But it was pointed out in Darwin's time that once you've got the purple, no amount of mixing purple with purple will give back your blue and red. And so the variation just disappears. So there's not enough variation for selection to work on. And there was a man called Fleming Jenkin uh, writing, uh, I think it was a review of the origin of species in, in the Scottish journal, um, in which he said, therefore, natural selection is impossible. Right. Um, which is actually silly, because any fool could see that as a matter of fact, I mean, if, if he'd been right, grandchildren should look more uniform than their grandparents, right. which is not true. So Fleming Jenkin was simply it's written Fleming, but he's pronounced Fleming. Um, Fleming Jenkin was simply saying manifest facts are impossible, which is ridiculous, of course. But nevertheless, his criticism did worry Darwin. And the solution to the problem is Mendelian genetics, which, which is digital. You, you, you're, you are not a mixture of two paints. You're a mixture, it's more like be beads of different colors being shuffled together in a sack. They, red beads and blue beads don't, don't make purple beads, they, they still say red and blue. And so um, in Mendelian genetics, what happens is that genes just go on unmixed with each other to the next generation. Your, your, you, your grandparents' genes are in you, intact. Only a quarter of your genes for, from each grandparent, but they don't mix together, they just shuffle together. That's the answer to the Fleming Jenkin problem, which Darwin never knew about. Um, Mendel's work showing that genetics is digital in that sense had been done in Darwin's lifetime, but Darwin unfortunately never read it. Nobody else did, but hardly. It was published in a rather obscure journal, and its significance was simply overlooked until the beginning of the 20th century. And then, even then, it's, it's um, it took a, a while for anybody to, to realize that this was the answer to the Fleming Jenkin riddle. So it was my job to explain this to the actor in, for this Japanese crew. I had to sort of answer the door and said, Mr. Darwin, I'm delighted to meet you. Um, <laughs> Were you very nice to him and oh, reverential? Of course, of course I was. <laughs> um, and then I explained to him and, uh, about this, this thing, and, and he was, he was a, that's it. That's it," he said. So it was. He did it very, very nicely. Um, so uh, that was rather. Nice Is that experience. what Darwin would have said? You think? Well, I suspect he would probably. Right. Yes, I think he would. It's so clear. Yes. And it's an explanation. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And so you published in 1976, "Selfish Gene." The book goes around the world. It affects so many people in so many ways. Why? And why then? Was it the timing? I have no idea. I mean, I, I, th I think. Um, it's a very clear idea, and and uh, I I think I I just put it into into words, uh, and um, yeah.
Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. You took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. It's got to be like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.